Witness now, we are joined by Avi Malama, the founder and CEO of Inside the Middle East Intelligence Perspectives and one of our top Middle East experts. He's joining us from Jerusalem. Thank you very much, Avi, for being with us. Let's go directly into it first. We're, we're hearing now about uh, the aftermath of that rapprochement between the Saudis and Iran, obviously a concern to the U.S. How much should we read into what's going on between the Saudis and Iran right now and how much the U.S. might be getting pushed out by Chinese interests? Well, well uh, good morning. Thank you for uh, having me. Let's start with something very simple. The Chinese are in the Middle East and they are going to stay in the Middle East and they are going to increase their presence in the Middle East uh, because this is their own strategic interest. Uh, indeed, the relationship between Saudi Arabia and the, the United States went sour. By the way, it went sour before the case of Khashoggi because I want to remind you that the Saudis were enormously unhappy with the fact the Trump administration did not retaliate following the attack on the Saudis. On the other hand, we have to remember Saudi Arabia and the United States of America have a long partnership. They have a long of common denominators in the sense of strategic interest. So they're not going to throw this uh, friendship uh, away. And as for the Saudis and the Iranians, here is something that has to be clear. The Saudis have no illusions about the Iranians and vice versa. The agreement that was brokered between Saudi Arabia and Iran by China mostly reflect first and foremost the fact that both Saudi Arabia and Iran are very much tuned to the Chinese interest because China is a major player. And as I said before, it's going to increase in presence and influence in the Middle East. So how does this play into these attempts to normalize relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel then? Well, as I've been saying all along since the beginning of the Abraham Accords and onwards, people were talking about Saudi-Israeli peace agreement. That is not happening. There is a constant going dialogue between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Some of the dialogue is a little bit more overt. Most of it is um, in a low profile. But it's been involving and evolving all the time. So this is part of the whole, I would say, attempt of the United States to kind of like steer back or take back the steering wheel in the context of the Middle East um, um, geostrategic um, developments. And in that context, by the way, I would pay attention to something that happened simultaneously. I don't know to say if there is a relation between the things, but we should pay attention to the fact that Egypt was recently, does this very day, is hosting um, the commanders, the leaders of both Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Cairo for a discussion about long-term stability situation in Gaza Strip. I don't know to say if there is relationship between the two or not, but we do know there are channels of communication between Egypt and the United States of America. So we want also to pay attention uh, to that. All in all, when we look at the whole picture of the region today, when we look at the Saudi-Iranian agreement, when we see the increasing presence of China, and by the way, India as well in the region, we are looking at a region that is changing, and this is one of the ramifications of that. And on that topic, we, we mentioned already the close strategic partnership between the Americans and the Saudis and how the Saudis are not going to throw that away, not yet, for anything that's being offered by these alternative states. But what can the United States do, particularly under this administration, which is adverse to giving them the weapon deals that they want, to actually claw back some influence with the Saudis? Well, look, Ariel, one of the major things that bothered and bothered and will bother the Saudis and the whole other area is the whole story of the Iranian, not only the nuclear program, but particularly the missiles, the drones and the militias uh, uh, component of the Iranian um, aggression and, and expansion policy in the region. Just yesterday, Iran announced it has its first uh, hypersonic uh, missile, ballistic missile. So there is a lot of concern and reminding you, the people of the Gulf, the Arab world, is aware of the fact that the Iranians in the end of the day are massively occupying or influencing Arab states. So they have no illusions about that. So the, United, the Saudis expect the United States of America to be much more robust in the way that they are standing in front of the Mullah regime. They, be, they expect them to be much more powerful and firm to throw it back any attempts of the Mullah regime to dictate in power or by power its hegemonic vision. Just reminding you the other day, the United Arab Emirates announced that it's actually a couple of months ago already withdraw from a local alliance uh, together with the United States that's supposed to secure the trade and shipment and maritime in the area of the Gulf. These are all things that in the end of the day reflect some basic uh, fact in this region. Players in the region, particularly Arab world, are coming more and more to the conclusion that they may not be able to rely totally on the United States of America. One of the outcome of that, as we saw, for example, is the fact that the Saudis, the Emirates and others are also turning to other big giants 
like China and like India. It's not to say that they are deserting their friendship or alliance with the United States, but basically they are saying, they are sending or conveying a message saying, we are independent states, we need to take care of our strategic interests, and we will do whatever we take and play with the right players to secure our strategic interests. Well, thank you very much, Avi, for explaining. It looks like there's a sort of power vacuum brewing, and 